Okay, so moving on. Uh, and you could set this to whatever you want, or if you don't want to use it at all, you, uh, you know, if we were to comment this out, for instance, you could see that when this button gets highlighted over here, it's actually not going to expand at all. And it's going to deselect as soon as we get off of it. But for the most part, you'll want to go ahead and do that, especially on things like sliders, where you'll want to really uh, expand those hit areas a bit. So now that's good. We have a button. How about uh, we actually uh, want to maybe want to do something when somebody touches the button? So real simple. There's an untouch up inside event. And if you saw the events tutorial, uh, then you know exactly how to use this. If you haven't seen the events tutorial, then go check it out. Uh, but basically, you'll just do standard plus equals. And we're just going to use an anonymous event here to keep this going quick. And we'll, uh, we'll leave that uh, button touched over there and everything. So if we jump back into Unity here, what we should get is on touch up inside. So that is when the person releases their finger, if they're still inside this hit area, we should get that. And you can see right here, button was touched. So, uh, so that's working fine. Okay, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a good start. We got a button up there on the screen, but let's, uh, let's play with some of the neater things here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dump a bunch of buttons in here, and we'll go over the code once it's in. What I'm, uh, what I'm basically going to do is drop three more buttons, and we're going to position these buttons so that they're in the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left corners of the screen. And this is where, I, where the UI toolkit gets really handy. So let's just jump through and, uh, and look at the code. Now this is pretty much exactly what you've seen before. You got your um, it's a, a continuous button, which is a little different. Uh, the idea with the continuous button is that uh, as it, as long as your finger is held down on the button, it'll continue firing its event. So this would be the kind of thing where, you know, if you have a, a game where you hold down a fire button to continuously fire, that's what you'd want to use. And this is the interesting part here. So there's positioning built into UI Toolkit, and you can position things relative to different locations on the screen. In this case, we're going to position it from the top right, and we're going to go ahead and just say zero zero. So that's uh, that's going to move the button into the top right hand corner of the screen, and it'll be zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the right. So it'll be squashed right up in the top left corner. Uh, centerize is uh, is something that you uh, you can do to any UI sprite, and what this does is it'll it'll make this instead of the the actual uh, game objects uh, anchor point being the top left corner, it'll actually push it to the center. This is useful when you want to rotate things or scale things. Because when you're, uh, when you're rotating or scaling, uh, you, if you do it from the center, it has a, a lot more uh, natural look to it. And uh, just to illustrate, I'm just going to stick a, a couple callbacks in here. You can see uh, when we did on touch up inside on this button, there's a, a method on touch up inside scores button that isn't defined. So I'm just going to stick that down here and we'll look at that in a second. Uh, okay, so I'm moving through this. You can see uh, not much else going on here. So options button, same thing. You're, we're using the, the up state, which is the standard state of the button. And then we have the down state, which is going to be the down state of the button. And clean that out. Uh, over here, we're going to do a position from bottom right this time. And again, we'll just do zero, zero. And going on to the toggle button, this is, a, this is kind of like it can be used to make a checkbox. And uh, you know, a three state button. So it has uh, an unchecked state, a checked state, and a down state. So we're just going to put in, given three different images for that one. And uh, again, we're going to go with our relative positioning. We're going to position from bottom left. And uh, yeah, just to, to toy around here, we're going to, on, on toggle, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll take the play button and just uh, toggle its hidden state. So when the toggle button's on, the play button will be visible. When the toggle button's off, it'll be invisible. So let's jump back into Unity and see what we got. What we're expecting is four buttons, and there we go. Four buttons pinned up against all the different corners of the screen. This toggles the play button. And this is a continuous button. And you can see how when this scales, it's scaling 
it's, it's doing the scale from the center point because we centerized this button. And over here, we have an options button that just does a little animation. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a quick look at the animations before we go on because these are just so simple. It only takes a couple seconds to explain these and you can see some of the, the methods you have available. So, on touch up inside scores button. So if you remember the scores button uh, over here was the one that just uh, bounced up and down, little scaling animation. So real simple here. All we do is when it gets clicked, we grab the button and there's uh, animation methods available. You, know, you can animate the scale, the position, uh, the Euler angles, and the alpha. So in this case, we're just gonna scale from two. So what that means is you can set the from value. So we're gonna scale it from uh, vector 111, which is uh, no scale. And then we're just gonna scale it up to 1.3, 1.3 in the X and Y directions. And you have a whole series of uh, easing equations available to you. If you uh, just go in here, you can just say easing and then toggle through and maybe you wanna do a, a bounce that easing out, for instance. And uh, you can add your own easing equations as well. So all you need is something that takes in a float, returns a float, and you can make whatever you want in there. So you can see we add uh, an auto reverse true here. So that means that once it, once it reaches its peak, after 0.3 seconds, it'll, it'll reach this uh, a scale of 1.3, 1.3. It'll go ahead and automatically auto-reverse back to its original state. And there's also uh, completion handlers too. So in this case, we have on complete, and it just says done scaling button. So just uh, now that we've seen the code, let's go back over here and take a look at what's happening here. And you can see uh, with 0.3 seconds, that bounce is uh, nice and jittery. So the nice thing is, all you have to do is jump in here and maybe do a keen tick, ease in, hop back over, and we can try out new animations to see what works. And that's got an interesting effect. All right, so scores button, or the options button, is um, it had two animations going on. If you remember, it, uh, it actually rotates and position changes at the same time. And that's dead simple to do as well. We're just going to simply make two animations. One of them is going to be position two. And it takes all the standard stuff. So we have a duration and the position that we want to go to. And then the easing equation. And uh, we're going to auto-reverse that. And then same thing with, uh, with the rotation. We're just going to set Euler angles two. And just uh, rotate it to 359 in the Z direction. And then just set our easing. And that's all there is to it. Not much going on there. Okay, so uh, one last thing I want to show here is uh, one of the neat things about the, you know, we didn't look at the HD or the relative positioning too much here. So we're going to leave this scene right now exactly as, as it is. And you can see in here, it's just got our four buttons in the, in, in the corners here. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the display touch area debug area. So let's go ahead and we're just going to look at what it would look like on iPhone 4G. So this is, um, this is going to trigger jumping into the HD texture. So if we go ahead and just click this and let it maximize, you can see we automatically, you'll, you'll get a little console message switching the 2x GUI texture. And you can see we, we automatically have jumped up and, and these, uh, these options all look nice and crisp here because uh, we did texture swapping so that we're using uh, higher resolution texture for this. So that's all good and well to stick things in the corners of the screen, but uh, let's jump over here, and I just changed one little thing here. I set all of the position froms to use this variable pause, and right now it's zero. So if we were going to make it something like 0 0.05, and what that's saying is when I position it, I want it to be 0.05% from the top, 0.05% from the left of the screen resolution. So this is going to vary a bit based on if you're on an iPhone iPhone 4 or an iPad. So first thing we'll check it out at is uh, standard iPhone wide. And when we pop this up, we'll see, okay, so we, we have everything positioned in top left corner still, but now it has uh, has this little relative gap here of 0.05%. You can, uh, you know, the, the UI toolkit uses, um, uses percent, but it also has a way to do pixel offsets if you wanted to make this 
pixel perfect over here. You know, if you wanted exactly 10 pixels from the top, exactly 10 pixels from the left. So you have full control. So now if we jump into iPhone 4G, we can see when we pop this up, we get everything laid out just how we want it. So we can code once and deploy anywhere now, and the UIs will all lay out the way you expect them to lay out. You'll automatically get your texture swapping. Basically, uh, just a huge improvement over, over trying to use built-in Unity GUI. So uh, everyone grab it on GitHub, fork it, and uh, if you make any new UI elements, uh, feel free to send pull requests. If you have any bug fixes, send pull requests out, and uh, we can start, start getting a whole bunch of, bunch of controls built for this thing and get it moving. Thanks for watching.